Hi everyone, if you're new here to the channel, my name is Ovi, I'm a first year medical student, and welcome to Ovi Man. Alright, so in this week's video, I'm going to talk to you guys about five things you should know before starting your undergrad slash college slash university. So, let's get to it. So first thing you should know before you start your undergrad is that your social circle is gonna change. So you might go to another city, a new state, or a different country even if you're an international student. So by going to a new place, there are very high chances that you don't know anyone. And so if you've been to high school with the same people uh, since, I don't know, since like elementary school, well, it would have been a few years since you have just started a new conversation with a stranger and tried to make uh, some sort of bond and connection. So it might be a bit unsettling at first, uh, since you might not have been used to doing that for a few years. It might sound a bit benign, but uh, for some people who are like introverts, it might be a bit more challenging. And then if your friends are not going to college, well, that's going to be another challenge as well, because you're not going to have the same schedule, you're not going to have the same priorities, you're not going to have the same commitments. So finding time that you know, matches both of your schedules might be a bit of a challenge, you know, compared to people who are in the same course as you. And then in your lectures, well, you might be mixed with different programs. So you might be in a lecture where there are like 300, 400, 500 students in the same big theater hall. And then depending on what lecture you have, well, you might be with different groups or different uh, programs in each of these lectures. So you might be with different people on every single lecture. And even for people who are in the exact same program as you, who are in the exact same lectures as you, well, there might be some major age differences within your own program. So like say, for example, you're sitting in a lecture, on your left, you might have a mom who has um, two kids working full time. And then on your right, you have a kid who just got out of high school. And so, you know, friends will come and go. You will meet a lot of people during university. Um, you know, the university is just so big, depending on where you go, you know, there could be thousands of people inside the same building. And it can seem a bit overwhelming at first, um, but you know, you get used to it. All right, so moving to number two, you will not be spoon fed anymore. Now, I'm not talking about moving out of your parents' home or going to a different city and stuff like that, because that too is a challenge by itself. I'm not gonna get into that. I'm talking about the teachers and the professors. So in high school, usually the teachers, they would say when to study, what to study, how to do a specific project, exactly what they want. So you would have this sort of framework around uh, your projects or uh, your study and you know what you have to do and literally the only thing that you had to do is just fill in the blanks at the university however it's a different game the professors won't tell you what to study they won't tell you when to study they won't tell you how to study you need to figure it out on your own and from my personal experience when you go to the professor and ask them what's on the exam or how should i study this how should i study that usually they don't really like it they're not really going to answer so friendly tip don't go asking your teacher, um, is this on the exam? Are we gonna have like A, B, C, um, or this topic or that topic on the exam? Because most of the time, their answer is gonna be, if it's on the slides, it's gonna be on the exam. Some teachers don't really mind being asked. Some will give you some pointers, uh, but the vast majority will tell you if it's on the lecture slides, it's gonna be on the exam, so now you know. And you know, I find that a bit frustrating because in order to better teach a concept, Professors would often go on a tangent and give you like real life examples in like a hospital setting or whatever laboratory setting, which is outside the scope of your lecture, but you're not really gonna know, you know, you don't know how much you need to know about certain thing. You won't know if that's gonna be on the exam or not. So um, it's really important to make friends inside your lectures, uh, have classmates to talk to, you know, compare your notes, compare what you're learning, what you're putting less emphasis on because then it can become extremely hard, you know, to just figure out everything, but yeah. And then also, as opposed to high school, the professors are not gonna know who you are. They have no idea that you're a student in their own lecture. They're not gonna know who you are. If you're in a big lecture theater with like 300 students, they're never gonna know who you are, you know? Even if you go after the class asking them questions, they have like thousands of students that they teach. And then professors are harder to reach than in your previous experience because these professors often work in a hospital, they do research, they work at a different university, uh, teach different stuff, they have like uh, different courses that they might teach different programs. So they have like thousands of students, different commitments really. And so uh, sometimes they would give you their email address, sometimes they would tell you 
come and ask me questions in the first 10 minutes or in the first 10 minutes of the lecture uh, or in the last 10 minutes. So I really got to make sure to use these 10 minutes accordingly because otherwise, uh, if you just send them email, they might never look at it or they might not know who you are and just not look at the uh, specific email. And so if I could give you tips about sending emails to professors, so write in the subject, write question for course, and then you write the course number and your year. And then in the header, just write who you are. I'm a student in your course, blah, 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 part of the program X and Y. And then I have a question about this specific concept that I did not find in the textbooks. You know, you gotta specify that you did your own research and we just like a bit more explanations. Then moving on to number three, your workload is gonna be significantly increased. So yes, you've probably heard about this before. You're gonna have more material to learn. You're gonna have more assignments, more lecture, different courses. You're gonna have labs. You're gonna have all sorts of things that you need to do in a shorter period of time. And in addition to that, following from my previous point, your professors won't give you this framework for you to work in. You're gonna to have to create your own framework and your own techniques to do all of that. And so with that in mind, you're gonna to need to develop some good time management skills. You're gonna to have to uh, work on your organization skills, on how you study, study techniques, which is something that we're gonna to touch on a bit later on. So yeah, courses are harder. You're not gonna know what you need to know and what you don't need to know. So I'm gonna put some emphasis on this. Talk with your classmates. So this leads me to my next point. Don't buy the textbooks. So in addition to all that I've mentioned previously, uh, if your professor doesn't answer and your friends are not too sure on a specific answer, well, you're gonna be on your own. But the best resource for answering your question is not always the textbooks. And let me explain why. So from my past experience, the professors would often build their lecture based on a specific textbook. So um, they will tell you, oh, I recommend this textbook because my lecture are based out of it. Uh, oftentimes what I saw is that they would only use diagrams and uh, very little bits of explanation because um, it's their job, you know, to summarize the material and give it to you. So um, I don't really see it as a very efficient method of studying, of just reading the textbook and then summarizing it on your own because that's the job of the professor. They're already doing it and uh, they're really doing a good job at it. You know, it's a bit useless, you know, uh, spend $300 on a textbook and then spending time and so much time and effort on just reading and reading pages and pages of words uh, that, you know, are really useless and they're not like direct and straight to the point. So yeah, it's just gonna be a big waste of time if you just spend all your day reading and reading inside textbooks. And in addition to this, uh, there are all sorts of resources online. We're gonna have YouTube videos. There are so many YouTube channels who just teach different science topics or any topics for that matter. Um, some that I use personally, for example, are Osmosis, Ninja Nerd, and there are just so many more out there uh, that are extremely good resources for learning um, your basic science courses and even more advanced stuff. So uh, I definitely recommend using that. Uh, if you've never tried, just give it a try. It might work for you. Um, then you have different courses online, you have different websites, all sorts of different things in addition to, you know, your lecture slides and the textbooks. So um, I don't see the textbooks as a need. Personally, I've bought textbooks only once and then never again because I, I just never use it and be aware of that. And if upper years are selling books to, you know, your year uh, and you see that almost all the books are like brand new, um, ask yourself some questions. Why are they new? Because they didn't use them. So yeah, if they're all like messy and written and everything, uh, either that's just how they study or they use it a lot. So yeah, just keep that in mind if you want to buy some textbooks. And then moving on to my last point, your old study techniques might be completely useless. So due to the nature of the different teaching methods, of uh, the increased workload, of uh, just how much material you need to learn on a short period of time, um, your old techniques might not be sufficient for you to learn all of that and do well on your undergrad exams. You might also not be used to do learning on your own. You might not be used to going out of your way and searching extra information uh, outside of the scope of the course just for you to understand better the material. So taking your time and doing nice notes uh, with like pictures and everything, uh, that's just not gonna cut it. You're not gonna have time to do that. If you do, well, that's great. But me personally, I didn't have time to do pretty notes. And so you might have to find a new way of taking notes, uh, maybe on your computer, you might have to find new techniques uh, that are more time efficient. But in general, you're just gonna need to relearn how to study. Even if you have stellar grades 
in high school, you might not have very good grades at the beginning of undergrad. And that's normal, you know, you need to readjust. And it's a bit of trial and error, really, what study technique uh, is gonna work. So for me personally, I finished my undergrad and I just finished my first ever semester of medical school. From my undergrad, I thought I knew how to study. Of course, for some basic courses uh, that I have not in medical school, it's fine, the techniques work well. Uh, but for new courses like anatomy, which are very dense and very material heavy, uh, my old techniques don't work. There's just too much material and too much information in a little period of time for my old technique. So basically for every single course, every single new course that you're gonna have, you're gonna need to find a new study technique. And even for me, um, I've done like a few years now of university and it happens uh, oftentimes that I change my study techniques uh, throughout the year or depending on what course I have because I'm gonna use different techniques if I have to memorize essays, for example than if I have to memorize all the bones of the body. That just two different memorization techniques that I'm gonna use, two different studying techniques. So uh, really for every single course that you have, I suggest that you adjust a little bit your study technique to tailor it to that specific material that you're learning. And at the end of the day, it's really a bit of trial and error. Don't base yourself on what the others are doing. Don't compare yourself with others because what might work for me won't work for you. And so yes, by all means, go watch YouTube videos on how to study, ask your friends, your peers, how they study, um, try it out, see if it works for you. It might work, it might not work for you. So uh, this takes a lot of time, you know, figuring out what works for you. And then when you finally get that technique, when you finally get what works for you, then you have this new course that comes along and just ruins everything because there's just so much more material and it's just different than what you've done before and your old study techniques don't work. So you need to find a new technique again. And this can be a bit frustrating, but with time, you know, uh, you get more flexible, you get more resilient. And so you're gonna have different techniques for different types of material. And even then, you know, you might always feel that you could be more productive. Oh, I could do more, I could do more of this, but um, everyone's going through the same thing and there's no like good answer for everyone. There's no magic method, you know, that makes you um, like remember a whole essay in like five minutes. It's not a real thing, you know? Look at your grades, look at what happens, uh, do an introspection, you know, look at how you studied and then what results uh, that gave you and stuff like that and try different things. Really. That's, that's the most important point, really. Try different things and see what works for you personally. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this up right here. I hope you enjoyed this video on five things you should know before starting your undergrad. And so if you didn't see my previous videos, please click right here. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, it's at ov.med, so please go ahead and follow me on that. If you have any questions or suggestions or anything, please type them in the comment section down below or feel free to send me a DM on Instagram and see you in the next video.